Our goal for today is to detect when the weapon's animation is finished, so that our player's finite state machine can take over again. We're going to accomplish this by using an animation event at the end of each base animation. So welcome to Barton, my name is Heinrich, and let's get into it. So let's take a look at what we want to do. If we come and take a look at our primary weapon, say, click on our base game object, and take a look at our animations, we have these four animations, the empty one doesn't matter. So in our sword attack one, what we're going to do is come to the end of the animation, so over here, and then click this add animation event button. So you can see that adds this little icon over here, and then in our inspector, it gives us this function dropdown where we can select a function to call when this animation event occurs. But as you can see, there's no functions for us to select. And that is because we can only select functions from scripts on the same game object as the animator. So what we need to do is create an animation event handler that's gonna sit on our base game object. So let's come to our editor, and then let's come to our weapons folder. And let's just go ahead and create a new Unity script. So again, this is the same as just creating a script in Unity itself, but in this case, it's going to add my namespace for me. And I'm just gonna call it animation event handler. Now, if I wanted, I could be more specific and call it weapon animation event handler. But in this case, because I have this in my Barton.weapons namespace, if I need to create animation event handlers for other parts of the project, I won't get confused because I know this one is specifically for the weapons. Okay, so in here, we can start by creating a private void function just called animation finished trigger. So with this function created, let's quickly jump back into Unity. And then let's come to our base game object and hit add component. And we want our animation event handler like that. Now, again, this isn't part of our prefab yet. So I think we can right click on it. And over here where it says added component, we can also apply to prefab from here. So instead of having to click on primary weapon and then coming to overrides, we can just do it straight from here. So right click on that, add component, apply to prefab. So now we should have it on our secondary weapon base as well. Yep, there we go. And then if we were to come to our sword attack one animation again and click on the animation event, you can see now this animation finish trigger is in the functions dropdown. So let's just go ahead and select that. And before we forget, let's go ahead and just do it for our attack two and our attack three as well. And now our animations are able to call this animation event function. So what do we want to do inside of this function? We want to inform our weapon that the animation is finished so that it can inform the player attack state that the attack is finished and then our attack state can say, okay, we can transition to another state now. So one option is to create a reference to our weapon in our animation event handler and then create a function in our weapon class that handles the finish trigger. But that's not our best option. We're going to have quite a few animation events like our action event, which is when our weapon has to do damage and things like that. Our weapon doesn't care about that event. Our weapon components care about those events. So instead of making our animation event handler responsible for telling other classes that something has happened, let's just turn our animation event handler into a broadcaster that simply rebroadcasts these events. And then whatever cares about those events can come and listen to them. So along with our animation finished trigger, we need to create a event. It is going to be a public event, and we're going to make use of the action delegate in the system namespace. And we don't have to provide it a type because it is going to be return type void and zero input parameters. And I'm just gonna call this event on finished. So now all we have to do in our animation finished trigger is simply say on finish, and then question mark full stop, invoke. And just a reminder that adding the question mark over here is essentially doing a null check before we call invoke. So if this is null, we won't get an error. Let's also go ahead and just turn this into an expression body like that instead of a statement body. And that is it for the animation event handler. Next, we can go ahead and come back to our weapon script. And in here, we need to create a reference to our animation event handler. So let's just go ahead and say private, animation event handler, and I'm just going to call it event handler. And then we can come down to our awake function and just set the reference here. So we can say event handler equals base game object dot get component. And the component that we're looking for is our animation event handler. 
But with this reference set, what we need to do next is create a function to handle our on finish event. And what this function needs to do is it needs to inform our weapon script that the animation is finished. So underneath our public void enter function, let's go ahead and create a private void this time function called exit. Now this exit function is what we're going to subscribe to our on finished event. So after our awake function, let's go ahead and quickly create our on enable function. And in here, all we're going to say is event handler dot on finish plus equals exit. So after the awake function is called the on enable function is called and the event will be subscribed to. And then we also just need to make sure we remember to unsubscribe from the event in the on disable function. So private void on disable. And then in here, just event handler dot on finish minus equals exit. So now in our exit function, we need to inform our player attack state that the attack is finished, but I don't want to tie my weapon to the player attack state. Maybe in the future, we want to make it so that our enemies can also use this weapon. And maybe they have a different state that kind of takes care of that. So instead of referencing the player attack state in our weapon, let's just do the same thing we just did and create a event that is going to be broadcast when the weapons attack is finished. And because our player attack state already knows about our weapon, it can subscribe to that event to handle whatever happens when the attack is finished. So above our animator variable, let's quickly go ahead and declare a public event. And we'll make use of the action delegate again. And we'll just call this on exit. We can then come to our exit function and just say on exit, question mark, full stop. I forget what this operator is called. I think it's null coalescing operator. And then we just say invoke. So we're kind of just chaining events together. When the event handler gets the on finish animation event, it's going to call the exit function. And then the exit function is going to call whatever functions are stored within this delegate. But so this means then we can now come to our player attack state, player attack state like that. And then let's quickly create a function to handle this on exit event. So it's going to be a private void. And I'm just going to call it exit handler. Before we put any logic in this function, let's just go ahead and subscribe to that on exit event. So over here in our constructor is where we set our weapon reference. So in here, let's just say weapon dot on exit plus equals exit handler. Okay, so this means that whenever that animation event is called, eventually, we're, we're going to end up calling this exit handler function. Now what needs to happen in here, we're first going to call the animation finish trigger. This is a function that exists in our base uh, player state class, because we have this is animation finished boolean. And then we have this animation finish trigger that simply sets that to true. So back in our player attack state. After we call this animation finish trigger, we need to go ahead and say is ability done equals true. Now this is ability done is a variable that exists in our player ability state. And that is what is responsible for determining when we are allowed to transition to a new state. So this is part of the player controller series. But you can see over here in our logic update function, we only check our transition conditions if is ability is done. But so that means by simply setting this to true from our weapon by calling that exit function, we tell our state machine that we are now ready to transition to whatever other state. So we can either transition to our player idle state or our player in air state. So I think at this point, it should work. No, I'm actually forgetting one thing. Let's quickly come back to our weapon script over here. And now in our exit function, after we invoke the on exit event, actually, no, let's do it before we invoke it. I don't think it matters too much. But let's just go ahead and set our active Boolean parameter in our animator to false so that the animation will actually transition out of it. So we'll say anim dot set bool. And the bool we're looking for is active with a lowercase a, and we're setting that to false. All right, let's test it. Let's see if uh, things are working as expected. So let's come back to unity. And then let's run the game and fingers crossed it's going to work. So if we left click, perfect, you can see our animation plays, and it finishes appropriately. 
And this also means now we can actually click more than once and keep attacking. We can also right click and do the same thing. So currently both weapons have the same attack animation, but not to worry. If we come to our animator and just set our counter to one, you can see we're playing a different animation. And if we do two, we're playing the third animation. Perfect. So our weapon system is now able to inform the player attack state when the animation is finished. And I think we've done that in a very nice and robust way. Using events is really a good skill to have. So that's going to do it for this part. I want to keep these short and sweet and to the point. In the next part, we're going to work on the counter logic for the weapon. So actually increasing this counter so that we play the correct animation. And that's going to do it for today. So again, if you would like to look ahead in the project to see where we're going, early access to the prototype code that I'm basing this series off of is available to all of my Patreon tiers. And with that mentioned, I would just like to say thank you to all of my supporters and wonderful people over on Patreon. And a huge special thank you to Cody, SM, Madger, Jake, Patrick, Atami, and Mike for your support on Patreon. You guys are absolute mad lads. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.